Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode we're going to talk about stereo lithography 3D printing. So let's dive right into it. Well first that name is very convoluted so people simply call it resin printers. Now resin printer is basically an alternate to filament printing. Now filament printing is very good for what it does however it does lack one serious thing. It does not have the resolution. Basically if you are making something big uh, okay no problem like if you are making an Iron Man helmet you can 3D print it and then you can polish it, sand it, whatever you have to do. But if you are making something small let's say uh, like a you know a small miniature model like this small like I'm talking like uh, you know less than a foot uh, not even a foot I'm talking like few centimeters high it, it does not have the resolution simply because that the way it works it does not allow it for uh, very small parts basically it does not have the resolution so people go for this fluid system and a light source now you have a fluid which is the resin that's why it's called resin printer you have the fluid now resin is in liquid form and 3d printer supposed to print a uh, you know basically solid object so using light source they make it solid and it's not a basically thermal process where it's like oh it's water and you are freezing it wherever you want it's a chemical process and it does produce a very high resolution products basically if you want to make a action figure let's say you want to like okay i'm gonna print a thought now if you take up a thought print on a this printer versus a filament printer this will be so much better like you have to do a little bit of work on like you know in terms of painting and all that to make it really pop out but uh, in, if you are using with a filament printer you have to spend a lot of time to polishing it sanding it or like you know acetone uh, acetone melting it so you have to understand, like many people flat out choose resin filter because you can understand this bottle is not that big but this action figure has a lot of detail for its size. Okay, so what's the science behind it? Well, science is very simple, very old technology that we used to call photopolymers. Anybody who's working with resins and all that, they know resin have a curing time. Basically, you take a resin, a resin is in moly, uh, molymer format. Basically, at that point, it's not bonded. The moment you apply it, it's exposed to the air and like generally they are made into part component. So once it starts to cure, it becomes a uh, basically polymer and becomes hard. Awesome, no problem. Now that is the same thing here. Only difference is this photopolymer is specifically tuned for UV based system. You can have a polymer that uh, you know specifically reacts to let's say infrared red light blue light or whatever like depending on a you know reasonable constraint generally people go for uv light so you take liquid photopolymer which is like unbounded state you put uv light it becomes uh, basically from monopolymer it becomes to monopop uh, yeah, polymer basically monomolars to polymers it becomes a, like a chemical level it bonds the bonding is on a chemical level it physically bonds to it it's not gluing together or something like that it's physically changing the chemistry if you take from before uv light and after uv light is completely different so this is what we like uh, talking about in a resin printer so you take the resin you expose it with uv tada your solid part now liquid vat and curing light depending on like how, how you want because some systems have uh, basically uh, the liquid vat is in like floating state and you pull your build platform others have where your uh, build platform sink deeper into the uh, basically liquid so depending on how what you want and why you need it and layer basically 3d printer is basically layer printing if you even if you have a 3d printer uh, basically paper printer that can cut out things you stack enough of them that's a 3d printer so this also does the same thing basically it also works in layer by layer so uh, depending on different resin basically you can control the color of the resin what you want exactly what you want you want red green yellow uh, transparent whatever have you or sometimes people use this for very good interesting thing in jewelry making and dental works where they make an actual casting and then they melt it basically uh, the, make the cast uh, the cast is positive then they make a negative cast using sand or ceramic and then they pour metal into it so it does have a lot of serious advantages when it comes to the resolution aspect and that's how it works it's relying on basically photopolymers and uv light because how the heck the machine works that's the science it has the photopolymer so how the heck the machine works well machine simply has a fine-tuned ultraviolet laser now it does not have to be a laser a normal uv will do it's just that laser is much easier to control so they will have a laser which, have, which will have on off switch and then you will have focusing system then you will have fancy things like this basically these are mirror and that is doing x and y control your uh, laser printer also has one of these Two of that will give you X and Y control. So using utilizing that, it is like okay, uh, it's doing the whole scanning now. If you don't want the part basically where in the liquid you don't want to it become the solid, you will turn off the laser. When you want to like you know basically so, uh, solidify it, you will turn on the laser. You're mixing all those things basically on off, then X Y control you get layer by layer, and then you will move your Z platform up and down, and you will get a you know a fully fledged three D object. So that's how it works. Now. 
when i say resin solidifies in contact it does like basically if you expose it to uv but it does have a curing time so you cannot be like infinitely fast like your laser cannot be like uh, you know one hundredth of a second it's exposing like you know one a4 uh, size area it has a curing time so again depending on the resin system depending on your laser intensity depending on the temperature of the system all of those things contribute into exposure time generally these things are uh, uh, you know kind of tolerant so you do not have to be like absolutely precise but for absolutely stunning result you have to be precise so these are the laser system. These are the first system that hit the market. Then somebody realized why use laser, why not use a simple light source because again laser has nothing to do with it. You just want ultraviolet. Specifically if you can make it uh, monochromatic and like absolutely focused on one spectrum, awesome. Thankfully we have UV lights. So somebody came up with the idea, just take a projector instead of having X and Y, uh, like basically your DLP projector already has a tiny hundreds and thousands of uh, tiny mirror that is like moving light on and off. So utilizing a light source instead of normal light you just use a ultraviolet light and mirror still reflects it so tada that's how uh, basically dlp project uh, projector started to being used for uh, you know your printers and all that is the same thing basically you take the liquid you solidify it where you have quote unquote on system basically uv light hits it if you have off uv light does not hit it and that's how you expose a whole layer now this is ludicrously fast compared to speaking a laser system these are like 3 to uh, 3 to 15 times faster than any other system because again it's exposing the whole layer think of it this way like if you are talking about a filament printer whole of the uh, layer can be like tuk, tuk, is like a, a, a dropping blocks in a you know sense so to say it's ludicrously fast this uh, for, uh, poly peo poly po poly uh, printer is very fast like it can print this size objects in less than 24 hours now you might be like okay that isn't that like you know kind of slow well yes but for the resolution it can achieve because if you have to achieve that resolution in a filament system first you can't second even if you try to do that it will be very slow so given the resolution and the size and the speed it's amazingly fast because it's exposing the whole layer one by one it's like tuk, pull it up and again the reason it's even that slow is simply because the resin needs time to cure uh, if the resin was like you know one hundredth of a second or one ten thousandth of a second you will have like simply like this 3d like you know magic hat it will literally look like a magic hat but again the resin is a bit slow you have to print support structure you have to have uh, like you know curing time and all that jazz temperature management also so people use that now again dlp chips are very expensive so somebody came up with the idea why the heck use dlp just use a 4k lcd so you will have hundreds of uv light again depending on your design depending on your system you will have uv lights and then you will have a uh, basically a diffuser then you will have a LCD. LCD is basically on and off circuit. Basically, it allows like how much uh, light uh, needs to skip and how little has to skip. And thankfully, you don't need contrast in this sort of scenario. You need only on and off. You're just like either off, on. If they do not make a oh, little bit light, no. You just want on and off. And high resolution is allowed to for your precision. However, side effect of that design is inherently UV light is again destructive it's very powerful very destructive you will destroy the lcd over time now this printer uses lcd side effect the lcd is a quote unquote consumable so they are making lcd a module as a like you know replacement product like you know buy this or buy two extra lcd module because worst case scenario they are expecting 200 hours uh, lifetime now 200 hours is not like okay you put uh, you bought the printer you open the box 200 hours from that now it's like how long it's been exposed to uv light now they are saying that uh, in they are uh, working on improving the system specifically if they can keep it cool they can push it much longer and they have successfully achieved 1000 hour but you get the point basically in lcd system lcd becomes a disposable unit and tlp is much more expensive however both of them are ludicrously fast so why you know you don't see this in like thousands of like if you uh, search youtube for normal 3d printers you will find filament printer like you know 10 times before you find even one uh, basically you know uh, liquid resin system why well simply put resin while it's in molymer state basically uncured it's flat out toxic it can harm you and, in, and i mean seriously like it can seriously harm you in medical terms you will need a hospital to cure yourself so to say it's not something that you can just yolo around it's something dangerous it has to be taken with serious care now again if you're mature enough you are in a scenario where you don't have you know cats uh, cats and pets running around where you, you know you can tap all over the resins and all that you are good but you can understand many people want something that is your quote unquote foolproof this is not flat up not so that that is one flat out for many uh, that primary reason people are like yeah no i can't even touch your like you know resin you cannot dip your finger and if you see any youtuber like i have provided a safety video down below and most of them have to use gloves for it so Again, not only your printer is consuming things, you also have to buy gloves, safety glasses and all that. Again, adds to extra cost. Now, 
on top of that that's a chemical risk based on the fluid it also has the uv light now again the uv light the intensity is so damn high that if for some reason let's say a uh, failure happens on the casing casing is specifically that color so it can absorb 100% of the ultraviolet so nothing comes out of it but let's say something it got degraded or broke the laser light can harm your eyes so and not to mention most safety glasses are not uh, uv laser protected so it's a eye risk not only there is a liquid chemical risk there is a eye risk on top of that now let's say you are um, uh, mature enough and you are calm enough that you can actually handle the system again people are using it it's not something that is like you know forbidden technology or darpa technology people are using it you can buy it on an open market or amazon so let's say you did that what is the final limitation the final limitation it does have ludicrously high resolution however it is soft inherently it's a resin and it's not hard resin that you use in fiber glass it's inherently soft like you can make something this small which, to give you idea that's a, like a small uh, just twice the size of your thumbnail uh, it does not have enough uh, rigidity so basically that's why you never see somebody using a resin printer to print another 3d printer while uh, filament printer, not precise enough not like you know high resolution enough, but you can print a 3d printer with this so if you are uh, someone who is a hobbyist most of the time you will be happy with this system rather than a uh, resin printer not only that resin printers generally offer a smaller build volume how big you can build is much smaller so if you are doing 3d printed tank and all that jazz uh, resin is not gonna be you know your friend however for jewelry industry where they use it as a casting or testing of the design basically like okay is the design good enough there is no alternate to actually putting out in your finger and like seeing it like and then many uh, jewelry shops have like you know models whose sole job is like you know they are hand model basically so designer will design a ring and then put in their finger and like see how does it look so uh, you can try all your CAD all day long but it does not mean anything unless you can actually see it in three dimensions so for them like this is a god a god sense and they are old enough mature enough where they can handle this so these are the certain consequences primary for, reason for me I, for not recommending is that even if you handle all the toxicity and laser risk and all that jazz it just makes soft parts so i'm like i don't need uh, you know miniature that badly that i am gonna invest into the system so if i gonna buy a 3d printer 100 percent of chance it will be a filament based one so this was my presentation on stereo lithography i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me out a lot and if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your disappointment please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching